because we're going to be talking specifically about the progression within um, bumps and moguls, it gives me the opportunity to tackle the importance of then the feet and the ankles particularly and, and how that can have a huge effect on your ability to progress. You'll hear Jamie and I talk about, first of all, there are certain points of performance that we want before taking somebody into the more difficult strand of skiing, um, undulating terrain with this constant change in the fore and aft balance. However, equipment, and although I believe in English they have that saying, a bad workman blames his tools, I think in the case of skiing it's slightly different because the piece of kit that you have will have a huge bearing on your ability to improve your performance in, in any realm of skiing. And that also then comes back to your own anatomy and your biomechanics and your understanding of, of how you stand on your feet. Now, for the last decade, we've gone on and on about this, and it is the, the first thing we tackle when we bring students to us, is we start to look at their um, feet and how they stand. We're also observing from the minute they come into, let's say, one of our lectures and classes, on the dry land, what are they wearing on their feet? How do they walk? How do they stand? And that might seem a bit strange, but it really gives us an idea of if somebody tends to stand and very much toe out and collapsed in a bit, then what's the likelihood of them suddenly being able to pull themselves into a good position on a set of skis that are moving down the hill over this bumpy terrain when this is their defaulted position here of simply hanging off the joints? Now, when somebody has, for example, a lack of mobility in their ankle joint, then what you will see is the brain will very um, intuitively create more mobility somewhere else. So typically in the ankle joint, what you see is when somebody has their knee translating forward here and there's a, a stiffening, that could be a combination of either in the front, they feel an impingement, or due to tightness at the back, when they feel that, the brain requires more movement and it finds it very easy by this action. And hey, all of a sudden I've gone from limited range of movement to sinking, collapsing the arch, and hey presto, I've got shit loads of movement now, okay? But of course, although this may not be actually too serious an issue for the ankle joint itself, it's playing havoc on the knee and the joints further up the kinetic chain. So for us, it's important that we establish these ranges of motion that somebody has, explain to them the importance of being able to stabilize and have a strong um, base of support out of shoes. So why is this happening? Well, one of the reasons that we're seeing limited range of movement, I already mentioned, could be tight gastroc soleus, the calves, it may be something to do with the navicular, it, it could be anything. And it's not important for people to know that, but usually when people make this movement, they'll complain of tightness at the back, that's the limiting factor, and we'll see the fascia very much stuck together, or very rarely, but you do get impingement to the front, okay? Um, you will always find when people have been squatting and moving incorrectly and making this movement pattern, that the calcaneus, the heel, starts to create a bone spur off the back, okay? A bit like this here, through lots of abuse and being in bad positions often when lifting heavy weights, it creates that bone spur. And the bone spur is a sign of somebody who's gone a bit valgus. So, are you a toe out person? Because that will have an effect. And you often see that when running, through the running cycle. If somebody runs and they do not have the necessary internal rotation as the hip goes behind and they bring their foot forward, they'll tend to land toe out a bit. And 
after many thousand steps, and let's face it, it's quite easy to do 10,000 steps a day. And if you're running, you may be doing 10, 20,000 paces a day. Very quickly, you get runner's knee and these things like patella syndrome that it's known as. So what happens as well is that we find that the shoes we are wearing are making us lean forward and we don't even know it. So we tend to be in a forward plane like this. I'm exaggerating for you, but actually the shoes that many people are wearing creates this. And this is known as the ramp angle in ski boots. We refer to it as drop as well. I found it difficult to demonstrate this because I don't actually own many shoes that have a huge ramp angle except my weightlifting shoe, but we tend to, to favor barefoot shoes which have zero drop. In other words, they're always just making me work my foot arch, just, and they make me be aware of where I am and they force me to not, um, to balance if you like, to center better. So people who are four foot runners or center, they land in the center, will tend to be using these type of shoes, barefoot shoes. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any trainers, but, but most of the training shoes you will be using will have a certain drop. Now, this I've already mentioned on our post, is something which annoys me a little bit, is when I see people doing squats, for example, and they're wearing running shoes, it's like doing a squat on your bed mattress. You, you, you need a proper shoe to do a squat, and probably better is when people are able to do a squat in bare feet. And it's great to see somebody squat in bare feet, because you see immediately if they are sub neutral, if they're in a position where they're not, the Achilles is not going off center, you can see it as you are teaching somebody. Now, I had to use my uh, wedding shoe. Um, this has a, quite a high heel lift on it. You can see it and it drops down. And this is what we call the ramp angle. And most of the shoes you wear will have a ramp angle. And often it might just be three or four millimeters, but it can be a lot bigger in some of these um, shoes that are sold, like more fashion shoe, if you like, especially in training and running. Now, in your ski boots, you equally have this ramp angle, and it has a huge effect. I've just selected two boots here that I've got from Rossignol and Technica, and you can clearly see, this is the left one, this ramp angle here, when I place my left foot on it, and I'll just keep my arches in where they should be. But you can clearly see if I just come into a position that I'm slightly forward. Okay? I'm leaning forward. I'm trying not to exaggerate it. I'm trying to just be whole footed and feel that you can see that. However, with a different model shoe, and this is actually the right ramp angle, but I'm just going to put my left foot on it again. The ramp angle is completely different. Okay, it's clearly not shooting me as far forward. Now, this might sound complicated to you, but it's the problem is, is it's extremely important to you because as Jamie and I are talking about the bumps and, and discussing fore and aft balance within skiing in general, if you're the type of person who either hangs off the front of the boot or equally finds themselves always getting caught to the back seat, the equipment could be the fault here. So therefore, if the equipment is to blame, it's worth addressing this with somebody who knows how to address this, and this is the problem. There are many um, boot fitters around the world, and many people who understand the specification of the boot, but whether they have the understanding of your personal anatomy and how you move is something different, because that takes a little bit of time. And if you imagine selling a boot suddenly cost the shop two hours to sell each boot, <laughs> economically in the shop, the profits are going to start dropping as, the, as people leave the shop because they're not willing to wait about for people in front of them. But 
basically a boot can take a long time to actually manipulate to your pattern of movement your restrictions your injuries and that is is sometimes um, quickly brushed off as they just sell a boot that generally fits and if you start to look at some of the websites they are sort of discussing a little bit of degrees you know this has 15 degrees of forward lean and you can adjust it from 13 to 15 to 17 it has the ability to have a um, narrower for a narrower foot or a more sporty person it's more set up with the last of 98 or 100 and you look at it and think what, what are they talking about but the volume of the boot becomes very important as well and as I mentioned on previous podcasts and things, I said that in the last couple of seasons, I have been skiing without footbeds. And I never thought in skiing I would have done that. But because when I first got into skiing, and even with my knowledge in sport, I still was convinced that a footbed may be the answer. Because I quickly want to be able to, to laterally move the boot. So it did make sense a bit that I, oops, I needed to, maybe I needed to block out this arch here. So as I made my lateral movement, there was an instant translation of that to the edge of the ski. But as is well known to people who know me, I'm not a great advocate of any type of footbeds. I really don't like them in training shoes. Um, and I do tend with people to try and get them to first strengthen their feet so in sport they don't need this. But of course if somebody's got plantar fasciitis or something, you know, and they can't stand on their feet because they're in so much pain, it becomes a necessity. However, what tends to happen is people just end up using this support like, and they just lean on it. Now some very good Guys in America, I noticed, were designing footbeds for, for children, for example. And what they were doing was they were encouraging them not to just lean on the footbed. The footbed was designed in such a way that they were informed to sort of feel like they were pulling off it. It's almost like if I've got a, a piece of string attached here and I'm trying to strengthen the arches of the feet. Okay? And of course, Remember, there's more than one arch. There's the obvious arch that we always see. And you might say, oh, I'm very flat-footed. You know, you're a flat-footed person. But there's nothing saying that if you're flat-footed, you can't learn how to develop a bit of an arch under your feet. And especially, not just laterally, medial, but also across your foot, this arch. Okay? And that's something which we can discuss as well. Now... From the boot side of things, then, it's important that you realise that it doesn't, it, it's not about what colour the boot is, it's not even about what flex the boot is, or what forward lean the boot has, because really, it's all going to be down to how you feel in the boot, and humans aren't designed to be on ramps, okay, we are designed to be feeling flat-footed, and indeed, you know, my skiing often gets a bit of criticism from the side of it looking sometimes a bit back-seated. But uh, this comes again from lifting weights where we do drive the power through the heel. And, you know, I'm saying that, but I'm still whole-footed. One of the things I see a lot with people, and I hear coaches sometimes say within squatting, they want somebody to be more driving through the heel, so they lift the toes up, for example. Now, this is basically switching off the ability to use my quads, which really that's what I'm wanting to use in, in these, these, this type of squat. So I want to feel that I can actively use my whole foot in a ski boot. Now, if you feel that you are too far forward in the ski boot and always got a lot of pressure through the front of the boot, then, you know, some people would turn around and put these shims in, like they would say, where you can experiment and between the binding and the boot, you can put in like a piece of perspex or something that doesn't compress and you can play with the different angles to see which 
um, forward lean suits you. But again, this is almost like putting um, a, a plaster over something when really we need to find out what's the reason that this person is, feels that they're too far forward a lot. When I um, do a lecture, I'm looking around a lot and I see that a lot of people, unknown, they're in a position that's sort of got a forward lean to it. Okay, I exaggerate here. But this is because what we wear on our feet is having a big effect on us. And this is why in the summer, try to get out of shoes. Try to start using your feet. Move your toes about. Mine are terrible because of being in ski boots. They really get squashed up. And my squashed up toes like this when they're crossing over is, is not a good thing to do. You know, we, we normally are used to gripping the ground. For example, when we're doing handstands, we use the arches in our hands and we grip the ground. In fact, the one thing you notice when you're doing a handstand properly is it burns your forearms out. Anyone will tell you that who is a gymnast. It's extremely strong on the forearms because all the micro adjustments now are being adjusted from low down into the hand here and the wrist. And the fingers are being used just like the toes are being used as you ski. So having good mobility, having good strength in your feet is important. The brain is very clever and it will, it will, if I'm in a handstand, it will use my wrist for general balance. If I'm standing up, it uses my ankle for that balance because that's the thing that's closest to the ground. So ramp angle is important. It can be affected by your ski and the binding, obviously. So this is the other problem. If we put the same binding onto um, a ski and one person has a size 27 boot, like a 43 or something, and then another person is a size five, the ramp angle is gonna be affected between these two skiers, okay? So it is relevant what we are wearing. And this is very important because when we take this and then we add on this, we continue to further affect the forward lean. And one thing's for certain in skiing that I've sort of heard said a lot is, being too far forward is just as bad as being too far back. I hope this is a good introduction to this and gets you a little bit of understanding. We'll see you soon again with Ski Instructor Academy.